Finding votes for a finalized bill to fund American Family Field renovations, proving to be a difficult task in Madison. CBS 58's Emily Fan and WIS Politics editor J.R. Ross discuss that and more in tonight's Capital Connection. Jair, we're first going to start with Governor Evers' lawsuit that targets three actions by Republicans who control three different committees. One specifically is that Republicans blocked pay raises for UW employees. They also rejected 27 conservation projects and ethical standards for state licensed therapists. Now, looking at this suit, Evers argues that it was unconstitutional for Republican lawmakers to reject all of these items. But when you look at the nuts and bolts, there are some, you know, immediate ramifications that this lawsuit could have if Evers is successful, but it could also have much broader impact on state government. Well, in the immediate term, any hope of a legislative fix or solution to the pay raise issue for UW employees is probably on hold. Um, so there's a committee called the Joint Committee Implement Relations. Once a pay raise is approved in the budget and funded, it goes to that committee called JOKER for implementation, essentially. The Evers administration submits a plan, we're supposed to vote on it. JOKER has refused to act on the UW pay raise uh, proposal. Now, Robin Voss, the Assembly Speaker, co-chairs that committee, has said he'll do the pay raises if UW either cuts diversity, equity, inclusion positions or gives back authority to the legislature to create or cut jobs within the system. Those are both very unappealing options, but there could have been maybe a solution, a, a work through for the UW and Robin Voss to make both sides happy. That's not going to happen now because as long as that suit is pending, Republicans are not going to approve a pay raise because it looks like they're afraid of losing the lawsuit. So that's on hold. Then let's talk about if Evers wins, which could be months from now, if not longer. Well, the stewardship program, talk about those projects. If the Joint Finance Committee, the Budget Committee for Legislature, does not have approval, final approval of projects, you could see lawmakers, Republicans say, we're going to kill the program, period. If we can't have a final say, if we can't dictate what money is spent, we're not going to allow anything to be spent to renew that program. So that's an example of where Evers could win but still lose in the end. Right, and looking at it, this too, what we're expected to hear Republicans argue is that, well, if you're going to challenge all these committee actions, well, what about all the other things that they have? I mean, you're talking about some of the most powerful committees here at the state capitol, ones that, you know, uh, craft the state budget, ones that can suspend or make rules over many state agencies. So when I was talking to legal experts, they also believe that this could have much more impact than what is kind of narrow in scope right now. But when you look at it historically, looking at U.S. Supreme Court case and in other several states, courts have really have kept this in narrow in scope. So it kind of just remains to be seen how much bigger of an impact this could possibly have. Um, also this week, Assembly Speaker Robin Voss went ahead to advance articles of impeachment against Megan Wolf, who is the state's top election official. But just a few days prior, there was a group that spent tens of thousands of dollars in ads that were airing in the Milwaukee market and on radio that targeted Voss for not doing this. So the timing is a little off here, but again, this is the same group that is constantly kind of picked at Voss for not doing enough to overturn the 2020 election and kind of these conspiracy theorists that have put pressure on him. Yeah, this group is saying they're going to spend $100,000 a week until Robin Voss either gets a vote on the articles of impeachment or is recalled or primaried. Now, if you do the math between now and the primary in August 2024, you have to spend $4 million plus. The people I talk to don't think these guys are going to raise $4 million to do it. Now, they got a six-figure ad buy, which surprised some people, but that's not a realistic threat. And people are kind of like trying to figure out what's next. Remember, there was a judge's order in the whole effort to like fire Megan Wolf saying, you cannot remove her legislature while this suit is pending. You can't go through a committee and point an interim. The vote by the Senate to remove her doesn't count essentially while we're doing the merits. That order though, doesn't address impeachment. It didn't like really entertain the idea of it. It wasn't raised. So the question is, does that order apply to impeachment or you have to have more briefs to flush out that issue? It, there are lots of interesting angles there. And I think the question, too, is even though, yes, it was these articles of impeachment were given to this committee, uh, you know, you and I are both hearing it's unlikely mm -hmm. that we're hearing that they'll actually take this up through a public hearing, um, but it still just speaks volumes to kind of the little timing here. Um, looking ahead to next week, lawmakers, uh, both chambers will be back in session on Tuesday. The assembly will specifically uh, focus kind of a lot of university, college, free campus issues. We've talked about the bill before. They're seeking, Republicans are seeking to end race-based criteria when you apply for financial aid, scholarships, loans. Then on Thursday, the assembly will take up a slew of election bills. But the Senate will be back on Tuesday. We haven't seen their calendar yet, JR. But the big question mark is, where is this Brewers funding bill going? This week, we got a 
new um, uh, summary analysis from the legislative uh, or fiscal bureau that shows a ticket tax on all Brewers events at American Family Field can raise anywhere from $3.2 million to $6.5 million a year, which has been a sticking point for many Republicans. And it's also a non-starter for the team. So the three things we think are going to happen are we're going to see an amendment that would require an audit of the Tatum Board's finances. We think there will be a ticket tax on non-brewer events. We think there will be something on development at the site of American Family Field to ensure that anything done is not tax exempt, essentially. The question is, how many Republican votes does that get you? And how many Dem votes do you need to get the bill across the finish line? It is clear from Devin Lemahieu, the Senate Majority Leader, he does not have the GOP votes to pass this bill on his own. For Democrats, is this, are these things enough to get you on board? Talking to the four Democrats from Milwaukee, Three are publicly no votes. Lena Taylor, Tim Carpenter, Chris Larson all have their issues. Their wants to become yeses are not realistic with the team. So where do you go to find those votes? That's a big challenge for them. All right, that will do it for this week. Thanks for joining us.